What's going on, everybody? It is Guns here from the Gun Show. Shout out to everybody that's joining us for the first time. I do uh, a live radio show Wednesday, Sunday night. My last name is Gun, G-U-N-Z. And uh, we've had some great guests the last couple of weeks. We had Water Parks on. We had The Main, who, by the way, they have a new album coming out in July, which is absolutely incredible. And uh, it's going to really propel them to the next level. We've had Mayday Parade on, Wonder Years. Lauren Sanderson was on. She's an incredible singer artist. Dwayne, a lot of cool people. And then my buddy who's here with us right now, William <laughs> Ryan Key. Ryan Key, Hello. my man. Um, and uh, dude, so good to see you. Thanks for joining us and uh, welcome to the Twitch world, right? Yes, sir. Happy to be here. Uh, as, I'm, as I'm doing, as we talk about Twitch, I'm trying to get Twitch to work. So give me one second. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, no problem. But uh, Ryan's actually just joined Twitch uh, in the last couple of weeks. He's doing a very cool concept, uh, music production, kind of giving viewers a behind the scenes aspect as to how music's made. And I always find that fascinating because I was never talented enough to be, I was in a band, but I was never talented enough for a band to actually do anything. <laughs> but uh, I am always jealous and intrigued by how some songs really come together in the different layers and different parts and what Ryan's been able to do on his uh, new Twitch channel, which you can check out, which is William Ryan Key. It's kind of giving us a behind the scenes aspect of the songs coming together. And it's been going very well. It's been very rad and uh, very cool stuff there. So he'll be joining us whenever he gives me. I'm here. Okay. I'm, here. I'm here. I just made I'm, it. Hold on. I'm just trying to get so I can see for it. chatting, chatting on your Wait stream for it. as well. Okay. Wait for it there. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Let's go. What's up? There we Hello. go. Sorry for Take two. I should have, <laughs> I should have thought to do that before we started. Now that I'm, you know, this such a professional twitcher. Right. Um, yes. Now, now that we've had but, uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch superstar to the resume, right? Here I am. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man. Thanks for having me, dude. It's great to see you as so always. What? Yes, I, absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, the last year and a half has been crazy, but uh, give us an update, I guess, first off on you. Where's home base for you now and how are things going? Uh, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been here um, coming up on six years now. Uh, yeah. I tried to, uh, I made a, an, a failed attempt to move back to Los Angeles at the end of 2019. Um, my, my buddy, Ryan Mendez, who is also a former member of yellow card and I have been uh, still working together since yellow card ended, just making music all the time. And uh, we have some really cool stuff going on with like film and TV. We're trying to get into scoring and composing. And so I went out there to try to really get that going and be able to work together every day. And um, I have family out in LA still my sister and my niece and nephew live there. So I was kind of making a big move and then, uh, then the pandemic hit and everything changed. I had, you know, I had basically one tour last year that, um, you know, I'm fortunate to get to do what I do for a living. It would have taken care of the whole year for me just to go on the road for about six weeks. And then I could go come back home and keep working in the studio. And, right. um, that tour went away. So I, it was, you know, it felt like the end of the world for so many of us, you know, like, what are we going to do for income this year? How are we going to survive? How are we going to do right. our job? You know? So, um, I decided staying in LA was probably not the most, uh, not, not the smartest decision, uh, in the middle of an income, uh, income free pandemic. <laughs> so uh, yes, yes. I basically just, uh, I basically just turned around and came right back. So I'm back in Nashville Bring back. now. Um, uh, and yeah. you know, it's great, man. I, I, I think everything I'm, I'm, I'm not a, everything happens for a reason type person. Um, not like a fate destiny person. I am a learn lessons along the way and, mm -hmm. uh, and apply them to your life person though. And I think, uh, everything I went through doing that taught me what I needed to learn throughout the year and through the pandemic to be where I'm at now. And, um, for me, man, the pandemic was all about like, at first it was terrifying. Um, you know, and again, I, I think so many of us musicians, artists felt that way. I feel so deeply for my crew, crew friends, you know, right. People who don't get streaming income, who couldn't start Patreons and Twitch streams and all this other stuff as easily as some of us could, like the guys who are just the road dogs that are making the shows happen. Yeah. You know, I've, I've felt so much pain for them through this whole thing. And uh, so, you know, even mine can't, wasn't as bad as, as the others, as far as like what I had to get through to survive. But anyways, um, I really used the time once the dust settled and I kind of got through the fear at the beginning of it to like, just focus, just get focused and kind of like try to, you know, turn that all that energy because like fear, I think can also sort of be translated into like excitement because it's such a heightened emotion. It's a heightened thing. Right, you're yeah. feeling everything's happening. So I, everything's happening. I yeah. tried to kind of manifest that into a positive thing. Stop, stop being afraid of what I wasn't going to be able to do and start focusing on what I could do. And, um, 
And, and that got me through the, not only did it get me through the pandemic, I started a Patreon page, had a killer little community of fans that stuck with me through that and supported right. me through the pandemic. But it also was like a life lesson. You know, I think I learned a lot last year on how to take, um, take a really kind of dire situation and turn it around into something extremely positive. Um, and I think this, this Twitch partnership I've gotten, which was, which was brought to me by Twitch. They, they approached us and said, said, Hey, would you be interested in doing one of these, these deals with us? Um, it, it's the biggest opportunity I've, I've had other than yellow card in my professional career, to be honest. And so I think manifesting all that and staying positive and I'm, I'm now seeing the rewards of it all. And I'm really grateful. And it, what's great about, uh, I kind of did the same thing the last couple of weeks, like realizing that Twitch is such a great platform and it's cool because they're really starting to focus on music as well. And, you know, mm -hmm. seeing our friends and stuff like, you know, they've always kind of been gaming, but now the Twitch aspect with the music is really coming along, whether it's live streams, live performances to, you know, what you're being able to do on the William Ryan key, uh, Twitch account that you should all go and make sure to drop a follow subscribe. And we'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. But I think, man, you're right. Like when you said in the beginning, you know, everyone's like, oh, this is only going to last two weeks. And then two weeks became two months. It's like, oh, but by summertime, the virus is going to go away because the heat, mm -hmm. see, the heat is yeah. going to kill the virus. That's it. And then all of a sudden, over. like, well, yeah, all of a sudden I'm in heat, August. I'm heat like, and bleach. <laughs> heat and bleach. That's all you need. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, it's, it's the end of August. I'm like, well, that didn't work. So we had to kind of just, uh, you know, come to the, realiz the realization that shit, like this is actually going to happen. And what I really noticed, and I had a lot of bands on obviously throughout the past year and a half, I wanted to like help them out with their live streams and kind of just give them support. Bands still released albums um, throughout the time as well. But it was interesting to see how some people were able to adapt because you needed to adapt, especially the music industry, which got devastated more so than a lot of other things. Like you said, from crew to production, tour managers, techs, artists, all that. And yep. I give you props because you came up with an idea, a concept and you were willing, able to make it work, I should say, with Twitch, which is very cool, man. Yeah. So when they um, when they approached me about it, you know, I I just kind of said, well, it, it it happened in a funny way, actually. I, I I've always played video games my whole life, but I've never done like online, like like competitive gaming, you know, like competitive first person shooters or anything. Mostly because of touring, because you don't have you don't have internet on the road, on the bus to be able to link up and play online. So, you know, we play a lot of FIFA and I play a lot of first person shooters, like grandpa style through the campaign. Like I'm not playing, like <laughs> playing the kids online. So <laughs> last year, just before the pandemic hit, um, I had some friends who were like, you should jump on and, and check this out with us and play, you know, play Warzone." And so, uh, being someone who enjoys playing video games, I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. I'm trash. I was terrible. I'm still pretty trash even after a year and a half of playing it every single night of my life. But either way <laughs> I jumped on and then the pandemic hits and it becomes kind of like uh, my social interaction kind of becomes a place where I hang with my friends. And so I really came to enjoy it for that reason and that side of it. So I was gaming a lot uh, mm -hmm. throughout the pandemic. Like I, when I would finish work, you know, eat, work out, whatever, like late at night, that, that's what I would do. I'd boot up and hang out with my buds and play Warzone. So that was a big activity that, that got me through socially through the pandemic. And so a few months, like four months ago now, probably three, three months. I'm not exactly sure how long it's been, but I thought, you know, I'm always, I'm always doing this anyway. So I'm just going to start a Twitch channel, you know, another William Ryan key thing for people to watch. And if somebody <laughs> wants to watch me and Kevin from this wildlife play Warzone, it's pretty funny. So it could be fun to come hang. So I'll just do it anyway. So I'll just stream it. Well, yeah. at the same time, about two or three weeks after I launched the channel, which I wasn't expecting it to be a thing at all. I know no one gives a shit about watching me play video games. They, they want me to make music, but it was really just like, Hey, I'm doing this anyway. So if you guys want to come hang out, why the hell fun. not? Right. Yeah, exactly. That was it. That's all I ever thought was going to come of Twitch for me. I was still doing my Patreon page full time, which was like a monthly live stream, a monthly Q and a, uh, a bunch of little perks and stuff throughout the month. And, and I got a lot of support that again, carried me through the pandemic by, from my, my Patreon community. But um, so I'm just gaming and my manager, his name's Andy Snape, Snapington. Uh, he's the best. He manages a mice and men and refused and, and nice. then me. I, so he's, right. it's like all this like heavy <laughs> punk and rock. What are, and then, what are these? <laughs> yeah. What are these is not then, like the others. <laughs> and then my sad, my sad ass acoustic and, and ambient <laughs> electronica. It's, uh, yeah. hey, all right. Um, <laughs> Which doesn't belong but, and why. <laughs> yeah. Right. But he, uh, so, so he's talking to Twitch about the, about the mice and men guys um, already. And in that conversation, the music team over there says, Hey, we noticed that that Ryan is on the platform and don't you manage him? Right. And yes, I do. And 
they said, well, dude, we're doing these partnership deals and we would love to have him be a part of it. You know, we're, we're really trying to grow the music side of the platform. Yeah. Um, we would love to have Ryan be a part of what we're doing. What do you think? And so he came to me with it. We got on a call and here we are. I mean, so it's, you know, it's, it's a contractual, like, I hate to call it a day job, but like, it's the first day it's job legit. I've had since it's I legit. worked at Chase in 1999, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. um, it's, you know, I boot up every day and clock in and do my thing. But, but when I, when I started talking to them about it, I was really upfront about, okay, here's what I think will work. And we'll, we'll, based on the Twitch I've watched and seen and what I'm doing is pretty different from what a lot of other music right. streamers are doing. Um, I think you get, you get a lot of guys that are doing playthroughs, which is super popular. You know, people who will just kind of sit and jam, uh, like, shred guitar or drums or whatever uh, over a, a song and people get to request the songs and chat all day with the artists and stuff and then i think from a music production side which is where i fall into the platform mm -hmm. um most people are are just and I, I said this to um i said this to to fred at twitch and he was like he didn't take it the wrong i was like i'm not trying to like diminish what anyone's doing this is just the best way i can say it like most people are kind of just fucking around if that means like most people are sort of just like jamming it's like a jam production with the chat and like what do you guys think should i should i put a hi-hat here or should i what should the lyrics be right, you know? and it's that, like yeah. Yeah. it's kind of just for it's a fun kind of vibe and i was like well I got a lot going on right now, production wise. I, I legitimately have a lot of stuff that I'm working on to produce for wide release, like stuff's going to go on records and go, go on scores and stuff I'm working on. So do you guys think it would be cool to do like an actual working stream? Like not just one, you know, not, not just kind of like booting up in the morning and making a song every day. Like right. a lot like of these songs are going to go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like really letting people in on my process, how I write, how I record, what, what instruments I use, what software I use. And, um, and they were like, dude, that sounds amazing. We don't have anything like that really going on. And we think it would be really cool. So that's what I'm doing really on the stream is, is like, um, just letting people kind of watch me work and, and make these, these records and, and songs that I'm working on um, that are, that are like really functional again, like for release right now. So I'm learning, you know, the, the community and the culture as I go, like I, I knew going into it that I was going to struggle with the idea of like, okay, now I'm actually in the zone, like working on a song, but I also people have are to pay watching, attention to the yeah. chat. It's, it's not like I feel pressure that people are watching. Like, I, I mean, I've been performing music for so long now and at this point, like all of my inhibitions and like insecurities about singing and all the stuff that kind of plagued me early in my life. I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. You can done listen, that. Yeah. listen to me sing. If, you if you think yeah, it sucks, nothing, then you yeah. can leave. You know, I don't care anymore. I really don't. So that's not, but by, I don't feel like pressure or anxiety that people are watching. Um, it's more that I feel like I have to just learn this like work play balance on Twitch. Right. So like the balance of including the chat and talking and taking breaks to hang and stuff because I'll get in the zone on a track and like I'm writing a, a part, you know, I'm writing a piano part or a string part or something and I'll just lose myself in it for like 20 minutes straight. Cause that's what I do. I'll sit there and just, I'm trying 20 different things. Just like, ah, da, da. and then I'm like, Oh yeah, shit. There's people hanging out here. Hey guys, what's up? You know? So I'm kind of getting used to that, that balance. That that's my biggest hang up right now, I think, but everybody is so cool and chill. And, and like, you do get a lot of people that are like, dude, we don't care. We're here for it. We just want to sit and watch you work, you know? Um, but I have I noticed it, yeah. that, that people do want interaction. And so I'm learning as I go, but, but I think from, from a, like, what am I doing standpoint for people who are curious, it, it is pretty unique. I think uh, on, on Twitch, what I'm doing. And I, and I hope, I hope that more producers do it. Um, there's always going to be projects that you can't or don't want to share every aspect of, um, you know, I think you probably run into that more when you're like in a band with four or five other dudes and not everybody's going to be on the same page about you sharing the music, whatever. The nice thing for me is it's my own thing and I'm doing what I want. I don't, at this point, there, I mean, in the world of streaming and the world of like, we're releasing a new album next month. So here's nine of the 10 songs pre-released, you know, like right, what's the yeah. point of like saving it anymore? Like, I think that, I think people getting the chance to watch it be made is just another cool evolution of, of music and music production and how people get music. So I hope that there are more producers and mixers and people that get on the platform to do more of what I'm doing um, so that, you know, people who are curious about music production and songwriting and things can come to Twitch to like learn things and, and, you know, watch people but, create like yeah. functional creations, you know?
And even for anybody who goes and checks it out, uh, we're speaking here with Ryan Key, of course, from Yellow Car. We'll talk about it. We'll get some of your questions. People have been tweeting questions throughout the last couple of days and stuff. We'll get to the questions and more, but you can follow his Twitch show, which is William Ryan Key. And I've been able to watch some of the videos, man. You're exactly right, because I am, like I said, fascinated because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talented enough to write the songs or to put the layers together or anything. And I, I always love listening to like, you know, those small like intricate parts that really sometimes make a song stand out than others. Like, like when you have headphones on, you're just like mm-hmm. that rules. And that yeah. being able to really put those all together. I have a question for you though, because you know, for anybody that watches the stream or anybody who works on you know, like pro tools or whatever it might be, there's so much at your fingertips now mm-hmm. for, from a producer, from a songwriter, from a, from an artist. Yep. Is it is it more difficult? Does it drive you nuts more now than say like 15 years ago when Yellow Card was starting? Is it harder now because there's just so much readily available to you as a songwriter? Um, well, with the style of music I'm I'm writing and producing now, which is a lot a lot more electronic, a lot a lot of soundtrack based stuff. I'm doing a lot of orchestral kind of like neoclassical vibe stuff. It can if if you let it, it can get really overwhelming. But the amount of instruments you have out there to choose from software instruments and and sounds and things. Um, I think though, for me, I I've been doing it for so long that I'm, I'm pretty good at like knowing what I'm looking for when it comes to like searching for a sound library or searching for a specific sound. So I'm never going to sit here for like two hours looking for one kick drum. Like I know how to sort of like do my search parameters to look for, uh, you know, uh, the type of kick drum that I want, which sounds crazy, but you learn along the way to do that. So instead of sitting there like with 2000, like what's that one? What's that one? What's that one? That's when you can go crazy because like <laughs> it too much just can a, be a bad for, thing. For the viewers out there, just imagine you go to like drum and also there's a yeah, thousand yeah. different ones and you're just like, oh shit. Like, yeah, but yes. that's literally what's, what happens though. For some yeah, people, you can, get, that's you can get lost in it. So I've, I've tried to like do, do my research and see like uh, a big thing for me, dude. And I think what's cool about doing this is one of the, the, the most beneficial things for me has been researching what plugins, what uh, instruments, what like sound libraries, you know, whether it be splice or music bed or wh- wherever they're finding uh, artists that I like use that is a huge help because then you're like, okay, I love what these guys do. I love what this guy does. I love what this girl does. I want to, I, I want to make, you know, I want to use those tools. And most artists are so open nowadays, especially in the electronic music world with their tools and what they're using and how they're making music. Um, that helps a lot because you can just go, go to, you know, those websites or those software companies to get the stuff that the artists you love are using. And I think that's something that's cool about my stream um, is I'm just kind of like, you know, another degree of, of letting people have a window into that. So if you're into making music like I make, then you can literally just see what I use. And I, it's like, I'm not, right. one, one of my favorite composers is named Olafur Arnold. He's an Icelandic composer. And not only does he like do YouTube videos and Instagram lives and all kinds of stuff where he's just showing how he does stuff and what he does stuff. He has sound libraries that you can buy that it's like, it's his piano, it's his synthesizers. It's the shit he's put on his records and he's just letting the world have it to use it. He's like, it's, it's, it, you know, it, everyone should have access to these tools, whether you can afford to have, you know, 50 analog synthesizers in your, in your own private studio or not. And I have the means to help provide that for people. Like how huge is that? You know? So, um, that that's the kind of stuff I do. I sort of turn, I turn to the people I already know that I love and I'm inspired by to kind of look for how they do things and then just translate it into my own stuff. We have a mingle dwarf F1 says that's Nick. Oh, Nick, Nick's, <laughs> Nick's a moderator on my channel. <laughs> Nick says 10 years ago, you couldn't do cool stuff. Like make sounds for a song from an iceberg ice cave. Uh, yeah, he, <laughs> everybody watched me make a loop out of glaciers the other day. So <laughs> that's what you're, you're right. missing. If you're well, not Nick, watching, that's what you're missing. Yeah. Nick, Nick, you could literally, you could go to where there is a glacier and record it yourself. But now you can go on to from the splice, comfort of which your is bedroom. A, you can yes, <laughs> yeah. splice is a website I use a lot to find sounds, and I just can, can type like organic foley or you know like nature percussion, and I found that that way. I found I knew what I kind of what I was looking for, so those were like the keywords I was using, and I found this glacier sample pack, and it was, it was amazing. Wow, that was exactly what I wanted it to sound like. So 
Shout out to underdog X underdog 21 saying that they Katie, love that's you. Katie. Katie. We got, we got the whole gang here. It is a Sunday night here. here. I knew I'm they would show New York up. city. Ryan is over in Nashville. You got any questions? Feel free to put them in the chat as well as listen. This is going to be available on the gun show podcast afterwards, all of that. Um, but we are live here on Twitch. Shout out to Twitch. And of course the Twitch music scene out there. Um, We'll talk about Yellow Card in a little bit and stuff, but from a I, I, songwriting perspective, was it, are you one of two ways? Are you an artist that needs to experience things in life in order to write about them? Or do you think this past year you were able to actually, because there was nothing else going on that you could kind of hone in on your skills and you finally did have the time? But so to extend that, like for, for those that might not know, sometimes bands will write songs like in the back of the bus or like they don't, you know, they're constantly on tour. They don't really have time to you know put together an album. Then they'll be like, all right, well, you have six weeks, two weeks in the studio here. And then all of a sudden it's just crunch time and it can be chaotic. So, you know, sometimes you don't get to have that time to yourself to make the songs that you always want to write. Are you, which way do you land? Do you, are you one that you need to have experiences in order to write or do you think the last year, like you were able to kind of come up with ideas because you finally had time to do that? I think for me, it's changed because of the, the stark difference in the style of music that I've uh, styles of music that I've made in my career. So the stuff that I'm making now is, is so much less like, I, I like songwriting based as far as like, I need to have a verse and a chorus and it needs to go to like, what I'm doing now is so much more about like finding one sound or one synth patch or one piano part or something that inspires me to just keep building layers and layers and, la and, and I just kind of vibe out and space out on it for a week or so. And I step back, I'm like, wow, this, I have this sick track. And if I want to put vocals on, I do, you know, if, if I don't, I don't, I'm doing a lot of instrumental stuff now for sure. Um, and I, so, some people are stoked on that. Some people are bummed on that, but I am doing a lot of instrumental music. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, so la I mean, and last year I really expanded on that for, for myself as far as like, mm -hmm. I was just at home all the time. So I was in the studio just making stuff all the time. Um, whereas, you know, back in the day, yellow card, it's very much like what you said. Yeah. We would, we would get together to make an album and it would be everybody there in the room together, feeding off each other's energy and trying to write a rock song. It's a totally different thing than composing a six minute long EDM song. It's a totally different thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So a little bit, a little um, bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I tend now I tend to just kind of enjoy the process more of like letting things build and, and creating sounds, unique sounds. And um, it's a, just a really different process for me now. But the nice thing is you can come and watch it live on Twitch. Plug. Right. And be boom. <laughs> well done. You're good at that. Yeah. You've done a couple of interviews in the past as you speak here with William Ryan Key. Looking back on, uh, you know, like, like, like you said, there were yellow card became such a massive band and you guys worked your asses off. I remember like the early shows, like the starting line, first Unitarian church and all that, but you guys worked your asses off. And then of course, obviously ocean now comes out like the album just, you know, and then it just chaos, uh, you know, just, Boom. But you guys did put in the time to get there. It's not like it was an overnight sensation or anything, but from a, was there, was there pressure? Like, so like outside, you know, when the world is all of a sudden looking at you and you're on MTV and you're doing award shows and stuff. And all of a sudden, like you might send an email and all of a sudden 20 people are now copied on an email and you don't know who they are, but they're telling you what they want in these songs. And you're just like, well, what the fuck was there? Like, how did you deal with that? What A, did that happen? And like B, how does one deal with that? Because in the end it's your songs, but there's so much like labels and management and just all sorts of shit going on. Right. Well, dude, honestly, man, I don't, I can't speak for other bands in that time period because a lot of us got signed to a lot of really big record companies, but I will say that, uh, we were really, really fortunate to sign with Capital and the team that we had for the first two, for, for Ocean Avenue and Lights and Sounds. Mm -hmm. We were really lucky. Um, everything changed for Paper Walls. The label got bought and sold like two or three times and the, everyone we ever knew that worked there was let go or quit and the, the whole thing moved from LA to New York. It was a classic major label dumpster fire at the end. Right. But the first two records, man, nothing. We had no, label, 
label had zero input, zero involvement in the songwriting or what we were doing. They really put their faith in, I, I think more than putting their faith in us, they put their faith in Neil Avron. I think that's, they were like, the great we know, Neil, yeah, yeah. yes, we know we're putting them with him and he's not going to fuck this up. So, um, and they were not wrong. So we, you know, we just, Neil was a huge part of our evolution as a band and, and as songwriters and like really learning how to properly craft songs and produce music. So, um, we were really lucky, man. No, I, there was there, there was their pressure, an, an un, unbelievable amount that led me to all kinds of fun pitfalls and chemical substance abuse and all the great things that happen when you're in a rock and roll band at 23 years old and selling 30,000 <laughs> records a week. It, it's, it's, you know, I did not have the tools to properly handle the anxiety and insecurities and all the things that came up with that when all of a sudden this massive, right. you know, international spotlight was on you. And when we were a gra literally a garage band practicing in a garage, like two years before that, I mean, it was wild, but, um, but musically, no, I never, I never felt, I always felt like we had the freedom to do what we wanted to do. And nice. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I mean, I, I feel that way for our entire career. I, I think any pressure on the music we did, we, we put on ourselves, you know, if we ever got caught up in like trying to write something, it usually went, didn't go very well. Our, the best stuff we did is when we just like let loose and wrote exactly what we wanted to write and weren't trying to, because I would be lying if I said that there weren't times where we were trying to chase ocean Avenue, you know, like lights and sounds didn't work as well. Paper walls. I think we chased a little bit, but we kind of also merged the two sounds in a cool way. And then we broke right. up cause it didn't work and the label fell apart. And then we came back and I think we, we made a lot of conscious choices in writing to not do that. Like we would catch ourselves and I think we were good at doing that. Um, nice. I don't think any, much of that stuff ever went on an album, but we, we, uh, there's, there's a couple, there's some songs I look back on and I'm like, man, we, who was trying to get on the radio there, <laughs> you know, but, but right, it, yeah. I, they were very few and far between. And, and we were really good at catching that. I think of going like, dude, you're not going to, you're not going to recreate it. Just, just write, just, just pick up the guitar, just, do write, you. just, just get in do the studio you. and jam. Yeah. Yes. And so, um, but it was always our own, you know, cre freedom and our own creativity that would either, either lift us up or, or, or hinder us you know like the pressure we would put on ourselves would either hold us back or our freedom to write or what we wanted to write i think really accelerated the band as um as as songwriters throughout our career now for those that want to watch uh ryan behind the scenes and everything that he does great music production and more really putting together songs that will be on an album and like you said all sorts of different genres and whatnot it's a really cool thing you can follow him of course on his twitch account which is william ryan key this is guns this is the gun show drop a follow drop a subscription and of course we'll get to the questions in just a couple minutes because your channel is about putting songs together and putting ideas together do you have a story that might um maybe surprise fans or whatnot. Was there a song like that maybe wasn't going to make an album that did make an album, or perhaps the song ended up being completely different from the one that fans were able to hear, like from the, the, the fans would know from yellow card, like any sort of like behind the scenes stories about like putting these songs together. I mean, I've told this story a ton of times and most people know it, but ocean Avenue zero hour almost didn't go on the, the record. Um, the, I, I just could, I couldn't finish the chorus, the melody and the lyric to that song. We had all the music recorded, had all the verses, uh, and the bridge recorded. And, but the choruses were just holes with no, no, no vocals. And I just could not get anything that Neil like was pumped on. And so we were, we were going to, Hopefully, yeah, we were hoping to have a beat one. B we were never a big B-side band. We usually wrote like exactly the right amount of songs for a record and uh, didn't have a lot of filler, uh, you know, where some bands will write like 40 songs and whittle it down to the best 10. We would just like write 10, you know, but um, we, we were going to, we, we needed a B-side. Back then you had to have a B-side, like the management, everyone, there, there is some pressure. So there you go. There's a little bit like you right. have to have a B-side for like the Japanese release or the the special extended you know, version extra yeah, CD yeah. Ver yeah there were, you had to have it back then so so ocean avenue probably would have ended up being a b-side that i would have had to just like either throw a crappy chorus in and finish it you know like after the studio sessions were done or whatever but um yeah it was just one afternoon they were tracking something else i was off in like the side room at uh, at sunset sound where we got to make those records and it just they can't it just happened then find you now and we'll get better it just came to me and i and i kind of jotted it down and I got through the first couple lines and um, I went in and I said, Hey man, I, I got another one. Cause I'd probably already showed him like five ideas or something that he was like, 
And so I come in and I'm like, Hey man, I, I think I got another one. And he, it was like, it was classic, like rock and roll studio shit. It was like, get in there and track that right now. Do you know, it right we're, now. Stopping it. Wow. we're stopping everything we're doing, go record it. And so I did, and we knew the song was special. Like, but, but again, it was our first major label record. We had no idea that anything that came after that was going to happen. So it's not like we were like, this is the hit. We didn't know we were going to be allowed to have hits, you know, like we didn't know that. We just, we, we knew it was a rad song. Um, but it was like, I mean, we didn't even, we didn't start like pushing that track for another, I mean, the record came out in July and I don't think that that song started getting pushed at all till January of the following right. year. Because Way Away so was first, like Way Away was yeah, like so the song. It, it was and, yeah. A, yeah, it was a while and we had no idea that it was going to do what it did. So, but I mean, but that's one, you know, where it's like, you're getting through the production of a song and sometimes shit just isn't working. And I mean, who knows, man, had I not come up with that melody, like that one, that day, that song would not have gone on the album and the, this whole story would be very different. I think. Was it always going to be the words ocean Avenue? Uh, in the lyrics. Yeah. Like, or did you know, like, you know, obviously like ocean Ave, like that's what. Um, I, yeah. You know, it's funny. I had that um, somewhere. I've got it. I, I, I just had that first, those first few lines written down in a notebook. Like I had written, like handwritten out, you know, there's a place off Ocean Avenue where I used to sit and talk to you. We were about 16 and felt so right, sleeping all day, staying up all night. I had that. And, but I had no, there was nothing to it. There was no, I hadn't written a guitar to it, nothing. That was just like a poem, you know, if you want to call it, that I had written down. Um, and so back then I would, that's, that was a lot of the ways I would write. I would, I would have notebooks with a lot of journaling and stuff in them. And then after we'd have the music done to songs, I would kind of sit with the demos and like try to fit pieces of words and stuff into melodies with it. There was some songs that I would write like the whole thing on guitar and, and come into the band room and be like, Hey, I have a song. Let's, let's right. work on it together. But most of the stuff we did, it was as it was music first as a band, we'd demo it up and then, God, what those demos must sound like now, like on ADAT from, from rehearsal. It wasn't like demoing it on your computer back then, you know, where you could like make it super tight and cool sounding as a demo. It was just like gross like. live band <laughs> rehearsal. Yeah. I don't like, know where those are, but I bet they're funny. Like I bet record, they're funny, man. Recorder next to the Marshall amp. You know what I mean? Like getting yeah, oh, sound yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah. So who knows what, the, what, where they are or what they sound like. We'll get to questions in just a minute. We've got a lot of them coming in and uh, someone said Under, underdog rub promises was an amazing B side and uh, you know, just a lot of things coming in. As we're speaking here with Ryan key, this is guns. This is the gun show drop follow. Of course, follow him on his channel as well. Did you find, um, do you have any advice? Uh, I've been asking different artists this uh, on the gun show, but do you have any advice for people that perhaps were struggling creatively the past year now things are starting to open up but even that is like you know new york city this past week was wild <laughs> yeah. new york city was crazy and i got to see a concert last week down in the lane city knuckle puck less than jake early november we did an emo night brooklyn there as well 1200 people it was fucking sick people want their music but even things yeah. opening up sometimes people are now even getting anxious and like because it's like oh shit we're going from zero to 100 from of course you, we are from you yourself do you I wish I could play my advice? soundboard for you right now. Cause I have team America queued up, but I, you wouldn't be able to hear it through zoom, <laughs> but that I mean, would have been very fitting. Yeah, exactly. Of course. I mean, that's what we do. Zero to 100 chaos. That's yeah. what we strive on. Do you have yeah. any advice for those that might be struggling creatively um, to kind of like put their angst at ease? Um, like I said, I tried to use the, the time last year to just stay focused and, and not let, the, that kind of fear take over, you know? Um, so as, as obvious and like cliche as it may be, you just, you just, I think if you, if you do everything you can, uh, you know, if, if you're a songwriter, an artist, and that's where you find your passion to stay positive, uh, you know, and it, it, it will manifest into results. I, and I'm like living proof of it because I was like, it's over last year like when when the pandemic first hit and like i said i lost that tour or whatever. i was like that's it i'm done with music i'm gonna have to figure out what what job you know where, where am i gonna go work like i that was really where my head was at wow. and it took a few months but i you know i stopped feeling sorry for myself and turned that around into like a lot of creativity and i was just making a lot of music and hustling really hard and it it, it worked 
Would you say, you know, we all started bands when we were younger, whether it was like high school, people making fun of us to get the girl, to get the guy, whatever it might be. You know, you, that's a lot of people started bands because of that. But, you know, the, music did save lives. Music saved my life. Like, we, you know, like literally got us through all that shit. When you think the world's crumbling down around you, how am I going to survive high school? Like, how am I going to survive what's happening to me or whatnot? Did this past year kind of bring back those initial feelings and that initial kind of um, importance of music? Once you once it was almost taken away from you, now that it's been able to come back, do you feel the importance of music once again? I think that people are going to be, I mean, you know, now that things are opening up, as you say, I, I think people are just going to lose their minds for music again. <laughs> I, th I think, I think uh, live music Let's is going to be- Let's go, let's I think, go. I think live music is, is going to be more- uh, lucrative and and uh booming than it has in a long long time so uh, you know i think people are starving for for going back to show it's funny because i'm sitting over here actually kind of basking in the fact that i i'm i think i'm done i think i'm off the road like i think i've officially figured out a way to stay home produce music in my studio and not have to tour anymore ever again and i'm happy about that but it's like at the same time, I know people are like jonesing to go to shows and everybody's, you know, I, I mean, all my friends, I feel so, I'm so happy for them that they're going to yeah. get to go back out on the road and start touring again. So yeah, I, I think people are going to find uh, live music to be a real, um, you know, like haven at the end of all of this, like to, to return to, you know, a safe place to be where you're with your friends and listen, you know, just back in whatever, whatever kind of music, whether you like going to, to, you know, warp tour style, punk type shows or you like going to edc or you like going to jam band shows you know it's like there's a community there that's been missing for a long time in whatever yeah. genre you like um and so I, I think getting back to that sense of community through music is going to be a big deal in the next year or two i, I mean things are people are going to just absolutely go wild and you, it's a, they always say you don't know what you have until you don't have it well we didn't have anything the past year and a half and especially mm -hmm. the live entertainment the live music industry whether financially or also just the fact that local venues shut down and just so much was taken away and now everybody's kind of like oversaturating tours right now because everybody yeah. you know there i you know there's bookings the holds for some venues are like 15 to 17 deep which used to be like two or three because yeah, it's crazy it's fucking chaos it's um, absolutely crazy do, but come on, man. You know that you, we love you on stage though. You got, you know that you got to get up there on dude. stage again, man. Dude, listen. You feed off that crowd. You fucking love that stage. But uh, I got to be honest with you, dude. I, I do, I do enjoy playing shows and I, and I've, I've enjoyed my, my time, you know, being able to tour as a musician. It's, it's like why I've have a career, but I'm not, I'm not saying this in any kind of like self-deprecating way or like any kind of like, woe is me. I'm just being honest. I do not like singing. I never have. It's one of my least favorite activities. I love writing songs. I like yeah. recording music, but I have never, my voice has always been a problem. I always lose it. I get sinus infections every tour I go on ever my whole life. I I've lived sick on the road with a lost voice and it's never not been a, a point of a massive point of stress and anxiety for me in my life. So the idea that I, to make a living that I don't have to do that anymore is like, really relieving for me wow. that I don't have to rely on my vocal cords to make a living anymore is it's a, I can't explain to you the weight off my shoulders that it is. It just, it just is. Yeah. I, 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 just, I like I took, I was a theater kid. I grew up doing theater my whole life, like from a very young age, I went to university for theater. That's what I thought I was going to do with my life. My least favorite thing to do in theater was musical theater. I hated it. I auditioned for American Idiot on Broadway and they said his monologue was amazing. I made a final callback last day. Like I made it all the okay. way to read. Wow. His monologue was amazing. If this was a straight play, we might actually have a spot for him, but vocally it just can't, it's not. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the singer for this band, the singer for this band. And you said my vocals aren't good enough. I know like <laughs> it's, <laughs> it is what it is, but I just don't, I've, I've never, I've never been jacked Damn. up about singing. I love, I yeah. do get very jacked up about a show. You're right. You're, you're right yeah. about that. Yeah. I, mean, I love being on, on stage. that live energy. Yes. Yeah. You fucking I crush do. it. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. But, and, and I, I'll miss it, but I, I'm so in love with what I'm doing now creatively. And, and just, it, I don't know. I, it's, I don't feel any type of like, I don't know. I don't feel any need to go back out on the road. You know, I'm not, I don't feel drawn to go back out on the road. 
Nice, nice, nice. I think we're just re doing it real quick. Hold on. There we go. We are back. One second. Cool. Just give it one second. Just reconnecting. All right, continue on because it's still recording. Um, we're speaking here yeah, with right. William Ryan Key from, uh, well, a lot of different things are going on. So in, beyond just Yellow Card, you're also doing some stuff with Mendez as well, putting together an album, right? Like kind of a, a different group here. Can you tell us about that and what's happening there? And this should be able to reconnect right uh, there. We go. I'm one checking second. it on my end. It just said it's offline yeah. right now, but. All right, I think it just started one more time. Go live. Welcome to Twitch. Fucking A, right, man? <laughs> there, there we go. go. All right, we're back live. All right, so in addition to obviously Yellow Card, you've also been able to do some other stuff. Everyone can follow you at Twitch, uh, William Ryan Key, as we speak with him. This is Guns and Gun Show. But tell us about this other project and the other thing that you're doing with Mendez and stuff. Is this like going to be a band? Is it kind of just something that's going on in the side? You guys were going to do this anyway. Tell us about this. Uh, yeah. So, so Ryan Mendez was uh, the lead guitar player of yellow card. Um, he and I have been working on music together, it, both in the capacity of like what I'm about to tell you about. And then in many other things as well. Um, he mixes all, almost all my music for me. Like, we've just been connected musically still uh, in a, in a big, big way, even after yellow card ended. So um, Ryan, like Ryan got me into this kind of more instrumental electronic world of music many, many years ago. And my musical palette just shifted and changed so dramatically um, pretty quickly. And it's never gone back. It was really, it was really an awakening for me. Like this, this some of the records he gave me and the artists that I sort of like, he was like, just check it out. See if you like it. I, I, yeah. I didn't just like it. I loved it. So we decided after yellow card that it would be fun to just try to make a song like no, no idea what it would be or what it would be for, but come to Nashville, let's hang and let's, let's produce a track. Let's, you know, let's produce a big ambient neoclassical EDM ambient track and see okay. what, it, what, what happens. So we did, it was the most fun. Like we just, we had, it was like, it was like, it was like starting a band in that way that it felt like completely starting something new. Like we were freaking 19 years old in a garage again. It did have that energy. And so we loved it. We want to make more of it. We made a couple more songs. Uh, we decided to name it, give it a, the project a name. We're calling it Jetta, which is J E D H A. Okay. Um, it's all instrumental. It's all electronic uh, from like a synth and kind of drum standpoint, but we, we have a, there's a lot of strings, a lot of piano, a lot of organic samples making our loops and stuff. So it's, it's very hybrid of like organic and electronic at the same time. Gotcha. It has that, that kind of dancey feel. It's got the kick drum behind it all the time. Um, but it's, it's super atmospheric and ambient and it's just such a, it's such a vibe, dude. So cool. Um, we have three songs that are mastered that we're going to drop as an EP finally this summer. Uh, and I'm getting a buddy to do to do a remix on one of those songs. So it'll be four songs uh, out later this summer. will be our first release. And in the meantime, on my Twitch stream on Mondays, Ryan and I are working together, uh, just producing our full length, like live for everybody to watch. So um, we kind of opened it up to the world on my first Monday, my first stream. I, I, my very first official music stream was with Ryan for Jetta. We played all the music for everybody. Yeah. Um, it was a vibe. It was really cool. So that's one of the things I'm doing on the channel is, is making the Jetta album. And it'll, I mean, it'll be 2022 probably before it's out, but we are finally going to put some music out this summer. And people can obviously watch how that all happens on William Ryan Key's Twitch. Uh, before we get to questions, some people want to know, are you gonna, do you want to play a song? Do you want to do it next time? Do you have an acoustic guitar lying around? Do you want to do it next I can, time? Yeah, you want to jam out a little songs. bit? I'm yeah, trying to figure out why, stuff, why my camera is so choppy. It's never like this. I'm wondering if it's just Zoom. I don't use Zoom a whole lot, but it seems really You're choppy. coming through though, yeah. Oh, really? Because it looks good to me, but um, uh, now I'm watching on the thing. Yeah, but I can, uh, I can jam out a little songs. bit. Awesome, man. Guitar. Hold on. Awesome. I'll be right back. Cool. It's our buddy, Ryan Key. There, of course, William Ryan Key. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat room. Shout out to everybody that's watching. This is Guns. This is The Gun Show. We do this every <laughs> single Sunday. And I just I'm almost fell on my ass. Ever. Do you guys see that? <laughs> I almost ate shit. <laughs> nothing like live, nothing like live, <laughs> live video almost, and audio. I almost ate shit. Live on The Gun Show. There Keep you go. Back. Boom. Right. Boom. <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to do one deep cut and then one, you know, that I have cool. that everybody's going to want to hear. No, uh, perfect, I've, I've, been, I've been having fun playing this one um, uh, kind of in this different way. Uh, it's been cool. I've been doing it at a lot of shows. So 
deep cut uh, soundtrack in the nature of, or in the spirit of my new endeavors. This is the only yellow card song that ever went on a soundtrack. <laughs> Is there a specific song that you look back and you're two questions. One, is there a song that you guys wrote in yellow card that you really wish hit it off that you wish everybody like really appreciated it. And then in yes. a part two of the question would be, is there a song that you look back on? And you're just like, damn, that is a really good song. Like, you know, kind of appreciated more later on. Um, the first, the answer to the first question is definitely yes. Um, we felt the, very similarly to the way that we felt about Ocean Avenue, except at this point we knew that we were allowed to have singles. So it was more exciting, like, holy shit, this could be really crazy. When we finished Keeper on Paper Walls and the president, the new president of Capitol Records, um, so not the same president during Ocean Avenue and Lights and Sounds, it was a new guy. He said something along the lines of almost these exact words that, 
you know, something like this is the biggest pop rock song I've heard in probably five years. He said something like that and then followed that up with, we're, you know, we're going to spare no expense. You know, we're going to push the shit out of this, blah, 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 blah. Now we all know how that story ended, oh. but, uh, oh. but they, they were jacked up about that song. And we thought like, dude, this is, this is something this this is this song yeah. is really yeah. special. Like it's pretty rare that you can write like a 15 second long verse and just drop right in the chorus and have it feel like you weren't forcing the chorus down people's throat um, from a wow. songwriting standpoint, you know, cause yeah. you, in pop songwriting, you want to get to the chorus as fast as you possibly can. Right. That's the thing. And it's gotten worse over the years because demand and radio and all this shit, yeah. but that song just perfectly kind of lined up with that, that radio pop feel to it, but it was also totally, yeah. us, you know, and it didn't feel forced to me. Uh, it was a little bit different than anything we had done before song wise, the tempo and stuff. Anyways, um, never really saw the light of day, but we were, uh, we were, we were excited about that. Oh, one. Man. Well, let me grab and my then, other guitar real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Do your thing. We'll get to the questions in just a second. Of course, follow him. Try not to Ryan. fall off the seat this yeah. time. <laughs> Watch your step this time. It is Guns here. Of course, make sure to follow Ryan, William Ryan Key on Twitch. Also, we want to give a huge shout out because we are on the main page of Twitch right now. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Twitch for really making this happen. Really appreciate it. Make sure to drop a follow, subscription, et cetera. I do this every single Sunday night, 8 p.m. Of course, then the gun show is available on podcasts and everywhere afterwards. But Twitch is where you're getting that live exclusive content. We're doing some play alongs. We had the main on, made a parade, the wonder years. We just had water parks on last week. They dropped a brand new album. Working on getting like all time low on the band Camino. A lot of really, really cool bands that are going to be happening here exclusively on the gun show on Twitch. But we got six more minutes left on main page. Enough of me talking. You want to do a, want to do one more song? Well, I, I might as well do this song then while we've got main page <laughs> attention, right? Let's go. Let's I, this, <laughs> read the room, dude. Read the room. What do you think, my man? Here we go, bud. <laughs> this is what I think. Uh, I think everyone, if you're watching right now, thank you, Twitch, for having us on the main page like this. And um, my stream is not about live music, playing guitar and singing and stuff. So this is a treat uh, and uh, happy to play for my man guns anytime, though. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so if this, will, if this will get you to come over to the channel, me playing this song, then it's the least I could do. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Off Ocean Avenue Where I used to sit and talk with you We were both 16 and it felt so right Sleeping all day, staying up all night Staying up all night There's a place on the corner of Cherry Street Walk on the beach on our bare feet We were both 18 and it felt so right Sleeping all day, staying up all night Staying up all night If I could find you now Things would get better We could leave Sleep, I dream and it gets me by I can make believe that you're here
told you that this was goodbye You were begging me not tonight Not here, not now We're looking up at the same night sky And keep pretending the sun will not rise We'll be together for one more night somewhere If I could find you now Things would get better we could leave this town and run forever I know somewhere, somehow, we'll be together Let your waves crash down on me and take me away yeah, yeah. Nailed it! Let's go. That's William Ryan Key. Follow his channel right now. Twitch.tv, of course, slash William Ryan Key. Our man, he does a lot of cool stuff behind the scenes, music production and more. Basically making an album, <clears throat> making songs that are going to get released and you can watch every single aspect of it. It's um, unlike anything else that everybody's doing out there. It's so, it's pretty much like songwriting class that you can watch along for free. <laughs> yeah, it's like production class for free. Yeah. Um, I am I am kind of making a yellow card album in a, in a way. Um, I started playing all these songs like that last year on my Patreon stream, just taking them way down, taking my vocals way down. Uh, I, when I say I hate singing, I certainly enjoy singing that way a lot more than I enjoy. If I could fight! Like the super full on, just that's just my voice. Um, yeah. So I, I've taken all the songs down here and, um, and that kind of started as like, well, I should record those like a, just a guitar and a vocal. Like that'd be cool. That evolved into like, these fully massive, like ambient piano driven reimagined yellow card songs. Then that evolved into one of my favorite artists on the planet is called hammock. They're like a ambient post rock um, instrumental group. They're from here in Nashville. They're amazing. Think like explosions in the sky and Mogwai and stuff, but, oh, but even geez. more like stripped down. It's less like okay. a heavy rock kind of um, anyways, I got to be friends with them through like Twitter and realized we lived in the same place. So we started hanging getting lunch and stuff became buds. So now I'm doing this reimagined yellow card album. I'm doing all 10 songs, but I'm just recording a piano and a vocal and some strings maybe. And I send it to hammock and they produce it into a massive wall of sound hammock song. So oh, the album's wow. going to be William Ryan key and hammock. And it's going to be 10 reimagined yellow card songs that we've done. Oh, together. that's sick. So, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, I can't believe it's happening. Like it's still surreal to me. They're like one of my favorite artists in the world, literally. So it's crazy, wow. but I'm, I'm, I'm doing my, part of that record like the piano and the vocals and stuff live on twitch every week so oh. i kind of move around um ryan and i work on the jetta stuff on mondays and the rest of the week i sort of bounce back and forth between my own kind of solo ep original composition stuff and then this this yellow card album thing i'm working on so it's a lot of Same. content it's a lot going on um but there is something really for yellow card fans there as well i obviously am stoked for people to come over and kind of see the the non-yellow card stuff i'm doing but um but there is there is some yellow card content on the channel for sure so check it out. Of course, it's William Ryan Key. My man, dude, so good to see you. I just want to hug you in person, though. I don't know if I got to get to Nashville. Hit me up next time. Yeah, I know, right? Digital, digital hugs all around for everybody in the chat as well. That's awesome. Thank you for everyone that joined us uh, tonight. Definitely check them out. Uh, you can rewatch this, obviously, um, you know, the next two weeks. And uh, shout out to Twitch. Fuck yeah, Twitch. Love you guys over there. At yeah. Twitch. And uh, thanks for making this happen. And thanks for, you know, bringing in just more music content, more music exclusives that nobody else is doing except right here on Twitch. I love you guys. Ryan, my man, I can't wait to see you. And uh, thanks for this. Thanks for playing the song. Thanks for answering questions. Thanks for kind of just, you know, catching up again with the fans that have our, you know, we, we always... We always look up to look at musicians because they're always on tour, you know, and the fact that there haven't been tours last year and a half, everyone's kind of just been stuck. So I feel like fans still want to be able to connect and just talk and see what's going on with the musicians and the artists and songwriters lives and stuff. So this was very cool yep. and eye opening, man. So thank you, dude. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Right on. And all my buds that were in here, I'll see you guys yeah. tomorrow. Uh, about one o'clock as usual, me and Ryan will be on working on the Jetta record tomorrow. So everybody come tune in. Awesome. We started, we, we, yeah. started, uh, we started at one central two Eastern. So at, at pretty much every day. So my schedule is on my channel for the week. Uh, I have to, I move it around sometimes, but it's pretty, I try to stick to it. So uh, come, come hang with me and Ryan tomorrow. It's a good time. And you get to hear the soundboard, which is my favorite part of Twitch. 
Right. A lot of people Play, were playing, <laughs> playing movie quotes during the stream is that are like completely take you out. Like you're listening to me make this beautiful piece of ambient music. And I have Cartman go. And it's like, it's my favorite thing. Yeah. So yeah. A lot of people were calling for the soundboard throughout the, uh, in the chat as well. Thank you all for tuning into the gun show. Uh, my man, we'll keep in touch. Thanks for playing the songs and stuff and shout out to Twitch. William Ryan key, follow him right now. Of course on all the socials, but especially here on Twitch and uh, I'll see you when I see you, my man. This is awesome. Thanks so much. All right, brother. Thanks for having me.